Hi, I'm Dan McClellan, your Chargers Wrapped Reporter for CBSSports.com. This week, the San Diego Chargers travel to take on the Chiefs. The Chargers are 2-1, and one, and the Chiefs are 1-2. and two. Here's a little preview of the game. Last week, I said the Falcons had a clear advantage over the Chargers in the turnover department, but I felt that was something they could handle if Phillip Rivers could be smart with the football and the receivers and running backs would be smart with the ball once it got into their hands. Clearly, that did not happen. Rivers threw two interceptions, and there was two fumbles. Ryan Matthews and Dante Rosario both in the red zone, and the Chargers lost 27-3. I wrote on Monday that the Chargers are not an elite team, and neither is their coach. The reason why, after missing the playoffs for two straight years and losing at home against a quality opponent in that fashion, you cannot possibly be an elite team. That doesn't mean that the Chargers aren't capable of making a playoff and going on a magical run after that. They're still in first place, and they take a big step this week to making the playoffs if they were to beat the Chiefs in Kansas City. That would mean they'd be 3-1 and one a quarter of the way into the season and have two road victories against AFC West opponents. For the Chargers to do that, however, they're going to need to get their offense in gear, which is normally high-powered but ranked 23rd in the NFL right now, and they're going to need to snuff out the Chiefs' running game. In order for the offense to click, Phillip Rivers is going to need to have time to throw the ball. They're going to need to find a way to stop Tom Bahali, who has 12 sacks last season. Three of them came against the Chargers. Ali will be going up either against... Mike Harris, the undrafted free agent out of UCLA, who has started the first three games at left tackle, or Jared Gaither, who returned to practice this week. He was limited on Wednesday and Thursday, but fully participated in practice on Friday. North Turner said he's hesitant about Gaither and listed him as questionable because he doesn't want Gaither to go in and only play 10 snaps. If Gaither plays, he wants him to play. Gaither said he's getting himself ready to play and expects to play. On the other side of the line, Jeremy Clary is going to have to be able to contain Justin Houston, who had three sacks last week against the Saints. And if you go back to week 13 of last season, he has nine and a half sacks. That's tied for first with two other players in the NFL. So for the Chargers offense to click, they're going to need to stop the Chiefs' pressure on Phillip Rivers. It's going to be a very tough task. On the other side of the ball, they're going to need to stop the Chiefs' rushing game, which is ranked number one in the league, averaging 191.7 yards per game. They have the league-leading rusher in Jamal Charles, who has 323 rushing yards, which included 234 rushing yards last weekend. The Chargers' defense, however, is ranked fourth in the league, uh, holding opponents to 67.3 yards and has really gone up against some quality rushers so far this season, although last week uh, did allow over 130 yards of rushing with a combined effort there. Those are the keys for the Chargers to be successful. Now let's look at the injury report. Cornerback Greg Gatson has been activated off the practice squad the last two weeks, an offensive tackle Reggie Wills was released to make room for Gatson on the roster. The reason for the move was that the Chargers only have three healthy uh, cornerbacks and they're going to have that again this week because Sharice Wright will be out again with a high ankle sprain. However, the roster move of making Gatson onto the active roster and then releasing Wells, re-signing Wells on Monday, waving Gatson, putting him back on the practice squad may not happen this week. Uh, despite the need for that extra cornerback, and that is because Nate Kading left Friday's practice with a groin injury. He's listed as questionable, but it's looking a lot more like doubtful. Kicker Nick Novak, who kicked for 15 games for the Chargers last season when Kading tore his ACL, boarded the team's plane without the benefit of a contract and is in Kansas City. Kading stayed behind. Now, it's possible that Kading could wake up and feel great on Saturday, fly to Kansas City, and he's your kicker. But in all likelihood, it's going to be Novak. So, Novak will be added to the active roster. Wells will then likely be released again. But then, what do you do with cornerback Greg Gatson? If you sign him to the active roster, you have to find another player to release. And I'm not sure there's one on the roster the Chargers want to release. If they do, I'm thinking it could be running back Ronnie Brown, who was inactive against the Falcons last week. 
As I mentioned earlier, earlier Gaither is also questionable. An in-slide uh, linebacker, uh, Demario Williams, is questionable with a hamstring injury. I'm thinking he might be closer to doubtful uh, because the Chargers really want to see what they have in Jonas Mouton, a second-round pick from a year ago who missed all of last season, really hasn't got a chance to play this year. And I'd see that maybe Mouton gets some playing time uh, this Sunday. Probable is outside linebacker Antoine Barnes, who suffered a knee injury against the Falcons, and cornerback uh, Quentin Jammer, who has had a hand injury for now uh, two weeks and, and played last week. I actually have two separate predictions for this game. For CBS Sports, I wrote that the Chargers are going to win 30 to 24. That's because I believe the offense will get in the gear. The Chiefs defense has done a very poor job of shutting down opponents early in the game. They do lead the NFL by holding opponents only six points uh, so far in the fourth quarter, but in two of those games, their opponents had a big lead and really were just trying to run the clock out. Uh, so I think the Chargers offense can get in the gear, and I have the utmost confidence that Dick Novak can succeed again for the Chargers as a field goal kicker. My other prediction is that we're going to see a game similar to the last two times the Chargers went into Kansas City where they find yet another bizarre way to lose. Two years ago, it was a couple kick returns for a touchdown. Last year, it was Phillip Rivers fumbling the ball right before they were setting up for the game-winning field goal. If the Chargers find another bizarre way to lose for the third consecutive year in KC, I think we're talking about a different team uh, coming back at 2-2. Two and two. Uh, I'm wondering at that point if the wheels might start to come off and a lot of doubt would start to sink in after last week's performance against the Falcons. So despite only being week four in the season and, and a road game, this could very well be a, a make or break or an early make or break game for the Chargers. For all your latest Chargers information, please visit CBS Sports every single day. And you can follow me on Twitter at CBS Chargers or San Diego Sports. You can also hear me on Extra Sports 1360 on Sports Squad Sunday with Doug and Dan every Sunday mornings from 9 to 10.